Hi and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to use the mouse cursor widget with the plus add-ons for Elementor. With this widget, you'll be able to customize your default mouse pointer with many available eye-catching styles. For instance, you can add a text message next to your mouse cursor. You can have a circle that blends in and reveals a different color. You can display an image and have it change when you hover on the link. And you can even have a progress circle as you scroll up and down the page and many, many more. I'm Dave and I'm bringing you this guest tutorial on behalf of the plus add-ons for Elementor and make sure to subscribe to their channel so that way you won't miss a single update. Okay, so let's dive right into it. Our first step is to make sure that our widget is activated and for this we go to the plus settings plus widgets in the search box type in mouse next to our mouse cursor we have a toggle switch make sure this one is enabled just like that click save now we need to clear the cache so let's go into performance purge all cache click ok and that's it all done already and now that our widget is activated, we can insert it in an Elementor page. So where is our widget? Very simply, scroll down all the different tools here and you'll find the plus creative. And this is where our mouse cursor widget is located. Or you can use the search box and type in mouse. And this is our mouse cursor widget again. And to insert it on your page, simply drag and drop it. And as you can see, if I hover on top of our widget, nothing is happening at the moment and the reason is because we haven't defined any settings yet but regardless this widget is a little bit tricky to use and configure as you can see we have a note here that says this widget works only at front end so if you wanted to see the results of your changes you will have to save your page and open that page and preview it in your web browser or you can update in the back end and then refresh your page Okay, so let's discover our different options. So the first option here is cursor area. So this one is where do you want to apply the effect from your cursor? And as you can see, we can select among four different options. We have column, section, widget, and body. So let me explain the difference between those four different options. So let's select column for now. So if you select column, your cursor effect will only show if someone hovers on top of the column in which your widget is inserted. So this is our widget and this is the co column container. So if you click on this, you can see this is our column. So basically if they hover anywhere on top of this column, your effect will show. So for instance, if I was to insert this widget here on the right column, we have a left and right column, it will only apply to the right column. Now if you select section, it will apply to the section in which this widget is inserted. So this is our section here, as you can see. So basically, if anyone hovers on top of this section, the cursor effect will display. Now, if you select widget, it will only apply to the element just next to your widget. So basically this one here. So if you were to put it here, it will apply to this element here. And if you were to put it here, it will apply to this element. So basically it will apply to the element right above your widget. And if you select body, basically it doesn't matter where you put your widget, it will apply to the whole body page. So the body basically is the whole content of your page except the header and the footer. Okay, so let's just select section for now. Now let's discover our different types. So as you can see, you have cursor icon, follow image, follow text and follow circle. So let's discover this option first, cursor icon. And we can select two different options here, predefined or custom. So if it's predefined, you can select among a few predefined options. So for instance, if you were to select crosshair, you have a small thin cross like this. If you were to select grab, you would see a hand. And let's say if you were to select a zoom in, you'd see a magnifying glass. But we can also select custom in which case we can upload our own image. So you can either upload your own file or select it from your media library. So we already have two icons here. So let me select this one for now and let's insert it. And if I hover on top of our section, 
you can see that now it is displaying our image. Now let's discover our next style, which is follow image. Now if we keep the same image and we hover on top of our section, here we can see both our cursor and an image following our cursor. And you can easily customize the settings of this feature. So let's say we want to increase the icon max width. Let's make it maybe 250 and let's see what this looks like now. Now, if I hover on top, you can see that our image is not up to 250 pixels. And the reason being is because this image is only 100 by 100 pixels. So if you want it to reach 250 pixels, your image would have to be at least 250 pixels in width. So let me select another image. So let's go with this one, for instance. And you can see this one is 512 by 512, which is fine. So let's insert this. And if I hover on top, you can see that that image is now 250 pixels in width. So let's go to the maximum. And as you can see now, it is 500 in width. And you can offset your image from your cursor as well. So at the moment, we have 10 pixels from the left and 10 pixels from the top. So let's increase this maybe to 150 from the left and maybe 50 from the top. So let me show you what this looks like. And if I hover on top, you can see that our image now is further away from our mouse cursor. And then we have the mouse cursor click feature. So let's enable this and let's select an image. So let's select this one here, the big cursor insert. So basically if I hover on top of any of those sections here is not going to change anything unless there is a clickable section, which is this one here. This button is clickable. And as you can see now, it is displaying this new image that we selected. So our next type is the follow text. So basically follow text is about the same as follow image, except that instead of an image, we have a text following our cursor. And we can easily customize our text by tapping it in here. So hello there, for instance. So if we hover now, we have a new message, hello there. And you can offset this as well from the left and from the top of your cursor. So let's try 50 and 50 maybe. And let's have a quick look. And as you can see, our text is now farther away from the mouse cursor. And again, we can assign a mouse cursor click. So this is a text at the moment we have see more. So maybe we could have click here instead. And let's have a quick look. So if I hover anywhere on this section, it will say hello there. But if we reach a clickable section like this one, it says click here. And if you want it to, you can even add an emoji here next to your text. And for this, you can use a free website called getemoji.com and you can simply highlight the emoji you want, right click copy and then go back to our Elementor page and paste it right here. And now if we hover on top, as you can see, we have a smiley face and we can go into style as well to customize the rest of our feature. So the typography, basically it's our font, so you can select any font you want. You can select the text color as well and you can add some padding all around it. So let's add a border here. So let's add a solid border maybe. And let's make it maybe one pixel in thickness. So let's have a quick preview. So there you go. Now we have a border all around it. And then we can change our background color. So let's add a color. Let's select a white maybe. So let's have a look. So that's not too bad. And maybe we want to change the opacity. So let's reduce that maybe a little bit so we can see through just like that. That's just perfect. And then we can add a border radius. So let's make it 25 pixels. So as you can see now, all our corner edges are rounded and we can even add a box shadow. So let's do this. So let's maybe let's add a five here and five there as well. Okay. So let's have a quick look and that looks absolutely fantastic. And last but not least, the follow circle. And our first option is the pointer type. So you can select predefined or custom. If it's predefined, you can select among all of these different pointers. So let's go with this one for now. And if you wanted to go for a custom option, you can select your own cursor here. Just click on this and import your own image. Now let's discover our first follow circle style, which is the border cursor. So let me show you what it looks like first. So basically, wherever I go, I'll have this follow circle going around with me and following my cursor, basically, you know. And we have the same settings as previously shown. So we can set a max width and max height and we can offset from the left and top as well. 
and then we can define a Z index value. So this will define where do you want to show your circle at the front or at the back of other elements. So let me show you now. So let's set this at a value of zero for now. And let me show you what this looks like. And with a value of zero, as you can see, it is displaying behind the other elements. So just like that, as you can see, it is behind. Now let's change this value to one and let's have a quick preview. And as you can see now, it is on top of our content. Now, depending on the Z index values of other elements on your page, if you want to make sure that it will always display on top, you might type in just 999, just like that. And then we have a list of tags option here, but it's for hover effect. So let's discover our styling options first. And from here, we can customize our follow circle in normal mode and in hover mode. So let's discover those options here. So the first one is to add a background color. So maybe for this one, let's select a yellow color. Maybe let's say this shade here would be perfect. And then we have the opacity. So it goes from zero right up to one. So one is fully opaque and zero fully transparent. So maybe we go with 0.5. And then we have a transform CSS. So if you're not familiar with the transform CSS feature, you can highlight this text, right click, copy it, and then you can open a Google search page and just look for transform CSS. And you will see the very first one here, W3 schools will give you all these different properties. So as you can see, we have a few examples here, rotate 20 degrees, QY by 20 degrees, scale Y by 1.5 and so on. And you can select among all these different property values right here. So basically all of these values, you can use them with the mouse cursor widget. And back to our options, maybe we can apply a scale 1.2 effect. So basically scale one is the regular size and 1.2, it will increase it by 20%. And then we have the transition duration. So this value is from zero up to three, but ideally you want to set it between zero and one. So let's go with 0 0.5. And now let's do the same for our hover effect. So let's select a color. So this time maybe a green. We're going to add a transform CSS effect of scale two. So this will double the size. And we're going to put 0 0.5 again as the transition duration. Now let's click update and let's have a quick preview. Now let's hover on top of our section. And as you can see, we have a yellow circle that's clear and you can see through, you can see our text behind it. And now if we hover on our A tag, so our link here, you can see change this color and it also increases in size. Now, if the effect doesn't work when you hover on top of your button, you might have to change its Z index value. And for this, simply edit your button, go into the advanced settings, and in the Z index field, type in 99, and this should work. Now let's go back to our content, and let's discover our next option here, so circle style. So let's go into progress cursor. Now we have a note here that says style two only works for body option selected in the cursor area. So basically here in the cursor area, we need to select body. And because this one applies to the whole body, to the whole page, you can only have one per page. It will not work in conjunction with other circle styles. And before going through all the different settings and styling options, let me show you what it looks like. So this is our progress circle. So I made it big enough so you can clearly see it on your screen. And if we scroll down the page, you can see we have that green circle appearing all around showing us the progress when we scroll up and down. And if we hover on top of a link, just like this, you can see it changes color and size as well. Now let me show you how to achieve this in the back end. So obviously we can define the size of our two circles, so of the inner circle and the outer circle, and then also by how many pixels you want to offset your cursor. Now let's discover all the styling options. And as you can see, I've selected three distinct colors so you can clearly see where they apply. So basically, this is our first circle. This is our second circle and this is our progress color. And then we can define a circle stroke width as well. So we have it set to 10 at the moment. 
So this is basically the red you can see all around our circle. And we can increase this value as well up to 100. And then we have the opacity. So you will have to set this value for it to work. So this is very important for you to remember this. You need to set an opacity value. So one being fully opaque and 0 0.1 being almost transparent. And for our circle progress, we can set the color and the width as well. So this goes from 0 right up to 100. So as you can see at the moment, we have it set to 10. And then we can also apply a transform CSS effect. At the moment, we have a scale 1.2, which means that it will increase the size by about 20%. And we can change the transition duration. So we have it set up 0.5 for now. So these are the settings for our normal mode. So as you can see, we have red, blue, and green. And then if we go into our hover section, we have blue, red, and green. So these are just the other way around, basically. And all the other settings are roughly the same, except the transform CSS. Here we have a scale 2. So basically, this will double the size of our mouse cursor. And finally, we have our blend cursor. And as always, we can define the size so the max width and max height. So we have it set to 100 for now. And also by how many pixels you want to offset the cursor. And let's discover our styling options. And the first one is the mixed blend mode. And as you can see, we have all these different options. So let's select difference for now. And as always, we can have different settings in normal mode and hover. So we selected a yellow for the background color. The transform CSS effect is scale 1.2, so it will increase the size by 20%. And the transition duration is set to 0.5. And in hover mode, the background color is set to green, the scale to 2, so basically it will double the size, and the transition duration to 0.5 as well. And we are going to go back to our content section, and instead of body, we're going to select section. And make sure you have the Z index here set to 999. And then let's click update and let's have a quick preview. So again, this mode is different. So as you can see, if I hover on top, we have a difference of color. Even over the font is the same. And over our button here, we can see there's a difference in color. Basically, we'll overlay the different colors. Now, if we were to set our Z index to 99, we would still have the same effect, especially on top of the text. As you can see, it is revealing a different color. But this time, if we hover on top of our A tag, which is a hyperlink here, you can see that the size increases. So it, it scales it up to 2 and it changes color as well. So our hover effect is working this time because our Z index is set to 99. So there you go. This is how you can implement the mouse cursor widget on your website. And you will agree that it does add a lot of interest to your web pages. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. Again, my name is Dave and it was a real pleasure to present this tutorial on behalf of the plus add-ons for Elementor. And make sure to subscribe to their channel so you won't miss out when new videos are being uploaded. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.